Actually, Chris put me up to that. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're bad together. <laughs> we're, we're so happy to see so many of you here on this chilly morning. At least we didn't get wet. It's um, going to be a good meeting today, it, a lot different from the last meeting, and lucky us, we get to do budget. I know everybody loves budget, but uh, just like we need a budget to make sure we have money for our old age or can pay our mortgage, water districts have to have budgets to make sure there's water for the future, for our children, for our grandchildren, and in my case, great-grandchildren. Sorry, I closed the thing. See, what did I do? Just go ahead. And okay, <laughs> so I'll take the handheld then and won't use the podium. Okay, so I'll just give, give you a quick overview of what brought us all here today, which is the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act passed in 2015 by the state of California, okay? And it's the first time in the history of the state you're going to regulate groundwater. Believe it or not, groundwater is the only water that's never been regulated. Things you have to do are form an agency, which is another little layer of government. You gotta come up with a plan by 2022 for sustainability for a 20 year period, right? And the state's gonna approve that plan. And if you don't do it, they'll come in and do one for you, which would be unfortunate. Um, the member agencies of this Groundwater Basin, which has been identified scientifically, geographically, is the um, San Lorenzo Valley Water District, the Scotts Valley Water District, the County of Santa Cruz, representing all the um, people that privately use the aquifer, the Mount Hermon Association, the City of Santa Cruz, because they've got Loch Lomond and they are dependent on the San Lorenzo River, and um, the private pumpers that mentioned, um, you know, with the county. Now, you don't have to include the private pumpers as members of the agency, but we thought it was very important to do so because they are partners in what we're all doing here together, and uh, we have a, a lot of them up here. And it's not just individuals with wells. There are small mutual water companies and the golf course, places like that, they all, they all use water. So that's why we're here today. And one of the first things we did when we got together is we came up with our founding principles, let's call them, or we call them our guiding principles. These are kind of like a constitution of a sort for what we're trying to do here. Now, it's written up in, in the kind of uh, speak that you do when you have an agency, and uh, we tried our best not to make it too thick but I'm gonna even break it down in a way that I think is the most plain spoken. And our guiding principles is that we have engagement, is what we're doing here, and that it be transparent, and that it be educational, and creative and fun, like we're doing, that we achieve a sustainable aquifer basin, that we learn from our past mistakes, that we work closely with all the agencies that decide what happens on the land that we live in, right? Like cities and counties that let people build things, et cetera. That we restore and recover the resource, this groundwater basin that we have. That we share the cost among the agencies that are doing it. That we watch the money that we do get and we spend it wisely that we share this resource, water, where and when we can, and that most importantly, we play nice together. So that's basically the, the guiding principles that we structured how this government agency is gonna run. Um, the uh, agenda for today, I don't know if you've seen it, but we're gonna have um, several speakers. Session one is gonna be kind of a more in-depth um, description of the Groundwater Management Act that I just gave you, um, that John Ricker from the County of Santa Cruz is gonna do that. Then there's going to be um, a little talk about basin hydrology, which is 
the water, and where is it? What does it look like under the ground? And that's going to be by um, John Fio. And then we have the whole water basin budget um, part of this program. And that is going to be, again, John Fio, water budgets, what are they, how do they work? Like Lois said, it's, you know, you save for a not rainy day. <laughs> right, okay. Um, then we're gonna take a break. We're gonna have breakout sessions and we're gonna have a fun exercise on water table budgeting. That's a little bit of a surprise. And um, session four is groundwater and surface water, how they interact. This is one of the important things that we're gonna find out about that we don't think about so much, but if it wasn't for the groundwater, the rivers wouldn't run when it's not raining. So um, it's important that we think about groundwater in terms of, of that. Now I'm gonna turn it back to my dear friend Lois here, and she's gonna introduce our first speaker. It's my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Assemblyman Mark Stone. He hardly needs an introduction, though. He's one of us, he's been there for us, and I know I've darkened his door a number of times, the poor man, uh, asking for his advice. Assemblyman Mark Stone represents the 29th Assembly District, which includes portions of Santa Cruz, Santa Clara, and Monterey counties. He's busy. Currently in his fourth term, he chairs the Assembly Judiciary Committee, which reviews legislation on issues relating to family law, product and tort liability, immigration, commercial contracts, court and jury procedures, and civil pr practice. Mark is also a long-standing member of the Assembly Natural Resource Committee, where he has championed policies to protect and pr preserve the coastal environment. He chairs the Select Committee on Coastal Protection and Access to Natural Resources, which has held hearings investigating oil spills, uh, preventing efforts, plastic garbage effects on the coastal environment, offshore fracking, beach erosion, coastal access for all Californians, problems associated with rising sea levels, and desalination. He is also co-chair of the California Environmental Legislative Caucus and an appointed member of both the Ocean Protection Council and California Coastal Conservation Conservancy. Pardon me. Before his service in the assembly, Mark was elected twice to the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisory Supervisors and concurrently served as a member of the California Coastal Commission. Wow, that was a lot to say. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> 